The FBI has raided the headquarters of one of the nation's largest operators of psychiatric hospitals. Hundreds complained of overbilling, misdiagnosed conditions, and insurance fraud. Investigators say they found more than 5,000 similar cases in all 50 states. Psychiatrists clearly are getting rich. Psychiatrists traded drugs for sex, filed false insurance claims, and exploited patients sexually. We have uncovered some of the most elaborate, aggressive, creative, deceptive, immoral, and illegal schemes being used to fill empty hospital beds with insured and paying patients. Every psychiatrist takes an oath to follow an ethical code of conduct, to put the care of their patients above all else. But of all medical disciplines, psychiatry has the worst record of fraud and abuse. Psychiatry is almost a license to print money. If a doctor were clever enough, and many of them are, there's no reason that they couldn't make at least a half million dollars a year fraudulently and get away with it in psychiatry. I don't purport to have deposed every psychiatrist in Las Vegas. I can tell you for a fact I haven't. Maybe I've deposed half. And by and large, they were a dishonest, deceitful, lying bunch of people. So prevalent are their deceptive and criminal billing practices. Insurance investigators have slang for it, like the California wave and the $100 handshake. $100 handshake is when Usually a patient is uh, institutionalized. Psychiatrists, psychologists will visit that person, shake hands with them, say, hello, I'm doctor so-and-so, I'm taking care of your, your problem here, and then leaves. They might have 10 or 20 patients there. They bill an hour for each one, and they might be in the hospital for a total of 30 minutes. So 20 patients, 20 hours and they'd send the bills off to Medicaid. We see that most of the victims of recovered memory therapy were women who had excellent health insurance, whether it was government insurance or private insurance, because many insurance policies wouldn't pay for this kind of long-term nonsense. So those people were targeted because of the nature of the insurance that they had. Every year, the U.S. psychiatric industry defrauds government and private insurance of $5 billion, using any means possible to deceive the public. There were some advertisements very seductive advertisements for people wanting to lose weight and were having problems losing weight. And they would be given, you know, all expenses paid to go to a particular spa. But when they got to this spa and went in and signed in, it wasn't a spa, it was a psychiatric center. And then they couldn't get out. What instead they received is they received massive doses of mind-altering drugs and they were kept for a lengthy period of time and their their insurance carrier was billed tremendous amounts of uh, money for something that was unnecessary. But their lies go beyond the psych ward and into the courts, whereas paid witnesses, they will say anything to collect their fee. A psychiatric expert who will have one opinion in one scenario and a completely opposite opinion in another scenario based on which law firm or governmental agency is paying for his time. The psychiatrist on one hand will tell the public that suicide can, can be prevented, but will go into court and tell a jury that suicide cannot be prevented. And then once you show his prior inconsistent statements, you also show that he is paid very well by pharmaceuticals, then the jury says, you know what? We're not so sure about you. Um, because you just lied to us. Add to the greed, dishonesty, and deceitfulness their sex crimes. Contemporary studies have shown that at least 10% of psychiatrists committed sex-related offenses against their patients. It has happened so often that by the mid-80s, the insurance companies who insure physicians across America started writing sexual claims out of the policies altogether. That's how common it was. The system was so broken that more than 25,000 complaints had been registered, but nothing acted upon. When a psychiatrist 
has a patient, a female patient, and abuse them sexually, there's a very high probability they'll get away with it. I've seen many cases where the mental health professional becomes very disturbed and is using very strange and odd treatments. And that can go on for many years with no one finding out about it because it's not very public. It's quite private. Things happen behind closed doors. Tragically, their sex crimes often involve children. Case in point, Dr. C. Markham Berry. On the surface, a well-respected member of his community. But all that shattered when he was arrested on child molestation charges. Van loads of child pornography were removed from his home, and the subsequent investigation uncovered his sexual abuse of former patients, boys aged 7 to 17, who he photographed and sodomized. All part of what the state called 50 years of Barry's rampant, undetected sexual escapades with children. This is not an isolated incident. It is the carefully masked character of many members of this profession. In every country throughout the world, you could well find psychiatrists committing rape, sexual abuse, murder, and fraud. And as you will see, psychiatry's entire credibility depends on the biggest fraud of all.